Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat. This is episode number 553. And the topic today is don't get upset if it, even if it's their fault or if it's their fault. I'm going to explain that in more detail and give you some keys because there's a reason why I don't recommend doing what you would do otherwise. But before I do that, let me introduce myself and explain why I do these talks and where this idea is coming from. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And help strong, successful women, um, high-achieving women, in fact, create and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine. And every day for basically two years now, I've done these talks, and the majority of those has been daily talks. Let's see, the last 19, 20 months, I've got to track now exactly when it was. But it was daily talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic is, or I should say today's episode is number 553. And the topic today is don't get upset, even if it's their fault. I need to change the title because it says if it's their fault right now, but I'll change that, which you'll not know because I've changed it. <laughs> and what inspired this was actually was, was last night. I had the joy to go back to my alumni, US, University of Santa Monica, and we had an evening that actually I didn't realize. I thought it was an introductory workshop for people coming to check out USM, which actually is next week. But, I, but it turns out last week was a... Um, gift to the community and the topic last night or the theme of the evening last night was um, heart-centered living in among, in challenging times and this kind of speaks to that theme sorry it's rearranging the camera slightly and this this is part of that for me it wasn't what we talked about last night so, so much but it's what I learned at USM so I want to share this with you so you know to spend two years in the master's program and all that money I'm um, giving my gift to you um, but I, I do help my clients with this and I'll tell you about that later on but the reason I'm saying don't get, ups don't get upset even if they're wrong, um, sorry, is that what I said? Don't get upset if they're at fault, excuse me, even if they're at fault. The reason I'm saying this is for one very simple reason. Getting upset is a trap. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> what I mean literally, um, well, figuratively I mean it's a trap, but what I mean literally is, is when you get upset, two things happen, actually at least two things happen. One is you tend to get out of control, which is not a good place to be if you want to handle anything, resolve anything or move anything forward. The second part, which is the part that I really have a big issue with, and I've talked about this quite a lot in my broadcast, because it is a hallmark of the codependent paradigm. Yes, I'm going to talk about codependence, is that when you get upset because somebody does something, as in you get upset at the results or as a result of what somebody else did or didn't do, their actions caused your upset. You're saying like, well, of course they did. Yes, of course they did. Yeah. But here's the thing. If you don't have governance over your own upset, if you don't have um, freedom, as was, was quoted last night to uh, one of, um, I don't know who the quote was from, maybe it was Viktor Frankl, about between stimulus and response, there is a gap or a space. And the thing is for most people, between stimulus, as in they do something wrong, and response, you get upset, there is a gap. But for most people, they ignore that gap. They go straight from, they're, they did something wrong, I'm upset, done. No chance of change, no distribution, no opportunity to change, nothing. And so, what most people forget, or don't stop to think about, is that when something happens in their lives, where somebody else does something, they are at fault. You don't have to go straight to reaction. You don't have to go straight to upset. You don't have to go to yelling, screaming, and that stuff. You can, but you don't have to. And the thing about it is, is if you are present to yourself, if you are a witness to what's happening, if you observe the interaction of what's going on, and sometimes, and I've had this experience myself, where I've almost laughed myself silly when I have watched myself do this, because we, we all do with this. When something happened out in the world, and it could be someone cuts you up in traffic, or you come back to find your car's been broken into, or your spouse says something that really doesn't cut you to the quick. Any, it could be any range of things that happened. When we react, we have no control anymore, meaning that our automatic reaction to what they did is sometimes gut level and sometimes reflexive because you've done it so many times, it's a habit. But the thing about it is when you do that, they 
whoever they are, is in control. Because if they do something wrong and you don't get upset, they don't have control over you. I'm going to break that down more because I want to make sure you get this point because this could change your life. In fact, for some people, it did for me, it could change your life. So it did change their lives and it changed my life too. So this is my gift. Um, well, it's my gift from what I've learned from University of, University of Santa Monica. So in the University of Santa Monica's language, they talk about how do you relate to the issue is the issue. Or how do, you, how do you relate to yourself once you're going through the issue is the issue. Meaning that your reactivity to what happened is where the work needs to be done. Because things out there are going to keep happening. Good, bad, or indifferent. And they, whoever they are out there, will do things that rub you the wrong way, just the way life is. You have a choice. And if you remember between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space, you have a choice to go, I could let that just go through its normal course where they do something, I get upset and I, get, and I blow up. Or I can take a different path and go, you know what, I'm just going to look at that and see what I can do differently so that their actions don't upset me anymore. And that is constructive choice. Now, this stuff applies to relationships, but it applies to business, it applies to family, it applies to anything really, because it really relates to you in life. And so this could be a useful tool, useful skill to develop, because when you do in fact use this skill for yourself, it will change your paradigm and it will remove your acti reactivity, which means for a start, you'll live longer, because of the fact if you're not stressing out all the time, your body's in actual more peace and harmony. And this is the thing. When you live in more peace and harmony internally, when things happen out there, you go, that's interesting. But you don't do, you're not, it's not ideally that you're going to become a monk where nothing disturbs your peace. That's a, whole other, that's a whole other level of achievement, which I'm not talking about here. I'm just talking about being a functional, effective, responsive versus reactive human being in the world. Taking the time to learn this skill, it doesn't take long, but taking the time to learn the skill, and most of the learning the skill is taking the time to take the time during the upset, meaning that when an upset happens, you take a second to go, hang on a second, I, can, I normally would react to this, but just for this moment, I'm choosing not to for a second. If I still feel like I want to, I can react later on. But you can be free to decide something differently in that moment. Again, between stimulus and response, there is a choice, or there's a space, and in that space, you can decide what you want to do differently. And I know that this is big stuff, and I, I, I'm, I may be, this may be too much for you to figure out, but so I, did, I invite you to watch this more than once, because this stuff I'm giving you is the cliff notes of what really was well it was over two years of doing this more than once more, more than two years worth because we did this several times over the over the course since then so this skill set I'm giving you is a powerful um, I was going to say magical it's not magical it's functional but it's a powerful and functional tool that could change your life and change every single one of your interactions because again if, as I said at the beginning, if you let yourself be upset, and thank you for all the love, Jermaine, I appreciate that. I saw all your hearts coming up. Um, by the way, this is Facebook Live first, so if you're watching it on YouTube, this is a replay on YouTube after Facebook Live. Um, I said at the beginning that if you are at the mercy of somebody else because they do something and you get upset, you're a victim of their control. Because you're not in control anymore. Again, I said when you get upset, you're not in control anymore. The reason being is you give them the keys to your control. When they, get, when they upset you, when they trigger you, when they do something that upsets you, like the kids, like your spouse, like your parents, like somebody else in your life, your reactivity to that is basically you saying, here, control my reactions. You're saying to them, you have control, you take charge, and I'm just going to be upset and be a ping pong ball in your, in your game. That isn't fun, and it's not very healthy, and it's certainly not mature. Choosing to take back control, not as a play of being against them, but as being for you is a powerful transformation. So, was that Daniel? How to how to deal with the expectation we create a better person? Well, this is this is <laughs> oh, you give me a good one to play with there. Um, yeah, let me talk about it. I was, was going to go somewhere else first, but let me come, let me jump into that one. This is this is the, the the this is the big work. When you can be in a place where you let people do whatever they do and it doesn't th doesn't surprise you, that's mastery. So, to answer your question more specifically, though, to how to deal with the expectations we have, we create a person, about a person, is ask yourself, first of all, are those expectations, um, I won't say real, are your expectations reasonable? Let's put it that way. So, for example, if you have an expectation for your partner not to cheat on you, and they do, 
then you're in a place where your reactivity may be justified, at least to the point of view of saying, you know what, I'm upset enough to leave this situation, because you can use it that way. But the thing is, when you sp constantly are putting expectations on other people, which is so far beyond what they can do, and let's take an example, uh, no, I don't want to go there, I don't want to get political, um, but there are people out there who do disappoint us by what they don't do. And we, okay, let me do it the other way. I have friends of mine who I know in social media and in public li in life who have very divergent views from me around politics. So I'll do it that way rather than talking about politicians. And initially I was very triggered by that because I expected them to be reasonable. I expected them to be smart. And of course I'm thinking smart means leaning towards the left versus towards the right, generally speaking. That's my view. So just don't argue, you don't argue on that one. And so for me, that expectation about that person was, I wouldn't say shattered, but it was battered by them saying things in such vitriol and, and demeaning terminology that I didn't know what to do with it for a moment. I was actually sitting in a place of going, oh my God, it's like, this is not the person I expected. Now, I've learned in some ways to disconnect the emotional piece first so I can have to examine it more clearly. And that's one of the things I was gonna talk about for that response. So when you have expectations about somebody that they violate, this is the thing, what that person does without knowing it is violating your expectations of who they are, but they don't know what they are. So in theory, wouldn't it be better to just not have expectations because you can't, I can say this, not you can't. Your, um, let's say this another way. Okay, so if somebody makes expectations, expectations upon you that you don't know about, you don't follow up with them, what right do they have to get upset with you? If you have, if you're going about your life doing your thing as normally, and somebody says, but uh, this person should be doing this, this, and this, they should be doing that, and then they get upset with you, how would you feel? You'd probably feel like, I didn't do anything. I was just being myself. So now flip the script the other way. If you have, if you have expectations on another person that aren't spoken and agreed upon, this is the other part. If you have people in your life that you have certain agreements with, like for example, a relationship, where you, decide, you clearly want uh, monogamy with that person, if you don't talk about it, that's an assumption. So when you have a discussion about that sense of, say, monogamy, and you make that a declaration, you both have that clarity. If one of you then cheats on the other person, sleeps around, doesn't keep that agreement about monogamy, then you get to a place of being like, how do you respond? Um, hang on, so you guess the million dollar question is how to live without expectations at all. Well, yeah, and yes and no, so let me get to that. So let me finish up my thought for a moment. Um, so again, two partners, agree upon monogamy. So they have, ex they have expectations on each other that either, both partners will be loyal to each other. There'll, there'll be loyalty, monogamy, and that's the way it will be. A year or two years down the road, if it's a marriage, for example, one of the partners cheats on the, other, on the first partner, or the second partner cheats on the first partner. To not get upset, I'm not sure how human you can be about that. Now, if you're not invested, and this is the thing, okay, I've got a split coming up, so I'm gonna see how I'm gonna do with this. It's, if you don't care, you won't get upset. That's a fact of life. So in terms of the million dollar question about how to live with no expectations, one way is not to care about anything. And that's not, why, that's not the way I'd recommend to live life. I'd rather say to be invested in life and enjoy life, but also to watch how you react. Because this is the thing. As I said earlier, it's, it's this thing about the gap, the, the space between um, stimulus and response. Someone does something that's, that's, that you judge as wrong and then you get upset about it. But there's a gap, there's a space in between the two where you don't have to react. So yes, people could do things that blow your expectations out of the water negatively, or positively for that matter. And you get to decide at that moment, do you want to react? Because this is the thing, most people don't think about it, they just react. But if you could actually ask yourself in that moment, do I want to react to this? You then have a choice of yes or no. And for most people, the understanding that upset is a manageable choice, that it's a place you can come to where you can actually be comfortable in a place where somebody does something wrong, in quotes, to your main thinking, and you don't get upset because you go, you know what, I'm just gonna leave, or I'm gonna have a conversation with them, but I'm gonna do my best to stay centered about it. Now, you may not, but if you can do that much, because again, if the other person violates your expectations and you didn't communicate what they were up front, are they really at fault? I'm not saying you are either, but there's, there's, there's this gap between the two of you. So if that's the case, maybe it's good to have a conversation with them rather than yelling at them, just a choice, a difference. Because it's a matter of degrees, because 
I'm not saying live without expectations, but I'm inviting you to look at how you can live without reaction. Because the thing about it, as I said at the beginning, is reaction is a codependent paradigm, meaning that when you react to something somebody else does, you become a victim of what they're doing. And that isn't a healthy place to be for anybody. I mean, I've talked about this in different pieces over the last couple of years in my daily talks, and there's every, you know, talking about stuff every day, but it's a pivotal piece of being functional in every relationship, and not just romantic relationship. But any interaction with another person, especially, yes, you can be upset about inanimate things. You can be upset about your computer dying or upset about um, traffic being messy. That's not a relationship necessarily. But again, it puts you at the mercy of that other thing because when you react, you're not in control. When you're not in control, you don't have a choice. When you don't have a choice, you're being a victim of somebody else's uh, actions, so to speak. And that's why I believe in this whole thing about being upset in reaction too, puts you in a codependent trap which is painful to be in. Thank you, Gina, appreciate the love. Um, so this is a big topic, and for some of you out there, you may need to get some guidance on this. I spent two years in my master's program learning this one, and last night was a refresher. So that's why I'm talking about it tonight. So if this is something that triggers you, or I should say this, <laughs> if this is something that you feel you'd like to work deeper with, that's one of my trained skills, because again, I went through the master's program. And I would offer that to you as one of my services. So I will put a link in the comments to a discovery session so you can sign up for a chat if you wish to do that. Um, but this is the thing. You can practice on your own. You, you don't need to work with me, but you might want to, just making that very flexible. And I won't get upset if you don't. Ta-da! I had to use that in my own languaging. <laughs> but the thing is, if when you spend the time to be willing to catch yourself between when the, upset ha the trigger happens and your upset reaction shows up, again, Stimulus, response, gap in between. When you can get clear in that gap that you have time to think, time to make a conscious choice, that's the time your life will transform. Because when things happen and you think, respond, and don't react, but you choose differently a way of being, your life will transform completely because you won't be in a place of reactivity. And for a lot of people, this is a lesson they could well learn because this is not something that... Um, isn't, it's not taught in school, or my most parents. So if this, is, if this is new information to you, good, I hope it helps. And again, I'll put a link in the comments you can sign up for a discovery session um, where we can talk more about this. So if you haven't got any more questions, I think I'm gonna wrap this one up because I, th I think I've given you like a big, juicy nugget for you to play with. So I hope it's been of help to you. And Danielle, if you wanna talk further, please let me know. I definitely understand where you're coming from, but the thing about it is living numb without expectations is not what I'm recommending, just to be clear. So, all right, so thank you for the love, thank you for the appreciation. Again, this is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, it goes onto my YouTube channel and also onto my podcast. I'll give you the links for those verbally. So, Jermaine, okay, so you're always wanting to Daniel. So, and if no, whoops. No, if I'm having two expectations at all, I tend to make sure I'm living the actual experience. Expectations, sorry, let me say it again. I know if I am to have any expectations at all, I tend to make sure I am living the actual expectations I so desire another. Nice one, Jermaine. So live as other people will see you in a way. And you're welcome, Daniela. All right, so with that, um, replays. So Facebook Live, I do my personal page first, then it goes on to my business page after that, which is barryselby.author on Facebook. I then repost those to YouTube, which is, uh, the channel is Barry Selby, please subscribe. And the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. All 552 plus this one, 553, will be up there um, for you to review and watch and enjoy. And you can comment there or right here on, you, on Facebook. In the, replay, in the replay, you can comment as well. I'll respond afterwards as well, by the way. And then thirdly, onto my podcast, which is on iTunes. I have a podcast also called Messages from the Masculine. Um, I did say the playlist on Facebook. The playlist on YouTube is Messages from the Masculine. So, yeah, both places. And that is Messages for the Masculine. You can subscribe to my, YouTube, my podcast as well, and you can download the audios if you want to listen to them when you're driving around doing other things. Um, but right now, I've got way more. I've, all of my broadcasts are on Facebook and on YouTube. I haven't populated my uh, podcast that much yet. So with that, I thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Your homework, yes, I'm going to give you homework, is um, review the last week. Yes, review the last week. And consider for yourself where you have been you're welcome, Jimmy. You're very welcome for that. Um, consider for yourself over the last week where you were triggered, where you got upset, and how you responded. And consider other options you could do in those situations, because this has now already happened. 
some of these may still be going on because you may have something that's still not resolved. But ask yourself, how can I respond differently to this situation if it happened again? And just consider for yourself what those are. You might want to share those in the, in the comments below if you want to. But certainly for yourself and for your transformation, consider what else you could do. And if you have any questions, reach out to me. Again, I'll put the link in the comments. So with that, I thank you for watching. Back again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Please take care of yourselves. I'll see you again soon. Bye.